What's up everyone, Michael here with another topic video. Today we're going to be talking about how E3 is opening to the public, or at least to a limited select few. And this isn't the first time that E3 has actually tried to go public and everything like that. However, this is a little bit different because it is the main event and not a sub-event. And so if you want tickets, you can actually go in, just like the press. Now, obviously there's some skepticism whether this is going to be a good thing or a bad thing. Most people are saying a bad thing. I've got some positives and some negatives and maybe some questions that we might want to ask about E3 in general because I haven't cared about E3 for a while. But before we get into that, game in the background is Freedom Planet, which is an awesome little platformer that I completely forgot how to play, so I'm playing it absolutely terribly. But it is an awesome little game that's basically based off of like the Genesis kind of platformers. There's a lot of inspiration here and everything like that. And you'll see that throughout the gameplay. It's a, it's a fantastic game. So if you like momentum platformers, end up checking it out. Anyways, on to the topic. So this year's E3, aka 2007's E3, has announced that they will be having open tickets to the public. So if you want to go ahead and pick it up, it is a fairly steep price. It is $250 to get into a trade show that basically nobody cares about anymore. But it is basically opening it up so it's not just people with press. You don't have to have proof of press to own these tickets. Now this brings up a few questions of what happened to E3 Live, which was an event that they held last year alongside E3. And basically that event was a kind of consumerism version of E3. It didn't have all the whole conferences and everything like that, which is the most, you know, interesting part of E3. And they kind of just had like game set up and everything like that. It was very similar to, a lot of people have told me it's like PAX, but I don't know much about PAX, unfortunately. But basically people said it was basically like that, except dumbed down and really didn't have much purpose and people weren't necessarily too happy with it. Now, moving on to this year, they're actually just opening up the entire thing. So all the conferences and everything like that will be open to the public who end up buying these tickets. Now, it is a little bit limited. There are only 1,500 tickets according to the sources that I checked, and they are fairly steep. They're $250 for one ticket, and given the limited availability, the chances of getting like a last minute ticket and the fact that, you know, this is a big trade show and everything like that is pretty slim. Most likely you're going to be either paying that price or you're just not going to go to the show. Now, they do have an early bird special, however, that is, I think, 150. Don't quote me on that or something like that. So if you really, really want to go to an E3, then uh, I guess pick up your tickets whenever you can. But given that, I don't think it's actually a good idea to go to E3 because E3 actually hasn't been all that relevant recently. And it kind of makes me question of where E3 is trying to head, because the last few E3s have been mostly just a marketing spiel over and over again. Now, three years ago, we had some big announcements with the like, console. Actually, no, it wasn't four years ago. What was the console announcement stuff that they had at E3? Can't remember if that was three or four years ago. God dang it. I'm getting old because now I can't even remember the years. But regardless, you know, that was the last E3 that we really had any sort of significance to. And a lot of people were kind of zoning into the whole fake marketing and everything like that to where people were like or companies are like hey this game looks amazing and it's this way and then and, you know it comes out and it's not amazing and it doesn't look like that and yeah people have kind of caught on to that by now so a lot of the marketing spiel that e3 was known for has kind of not really been effective anymore and so people have really lost a lot of interest in e3 and the fact is they just don't have a lot of interesting things going on at e3 anymore they have a lot of sort of commercialized showings rather than, you know, actual game information. You know, let's say, for example, Nintendo, they could have easily announced that the Switch was going to be at E3 and they could have shown it off at their conference and everything like that. They didn't. Instead, they did that at a completely different time, you know, on their own deal, because quite frankly, nobody really cares about E3 anymore. It is a press only event, but a lot of the press has even been saying the same thing. Maybe not the kind of traditional media. The traditional media kind of needs E3 to get their whole preview coverage and everything like that. So it's kind of important for them. But for modern media, such as, you know, YouTubers like myself or, you know, you know, kind of standalone sites and everything like that, they don't really necessarily care about E3 and they don't get to go to E3 regardless. They go to events like PAX or um, CES and things like that to kind of get their, you know, tech and gaming fixes or their new information. Or maybe they even check after market events or self conferences such as, you know, Microsoft had its own little dev sort of conference a while ago. What is it called? I can't remember what it's called, but basically they actually showed off some new Windows 10 stuff, which was another topic I was thinking about doing, but there's not enough information for me to do a topic about it. But they're basically cleaning up Windows 10 even more, which makes it look gorgeous and everything like that. So hopefully that turns out good. Um, we don't know much about it, so I won't talk too much more on it. 
but what does this mean? Like, where is E3 going now? Because it's in a state to where it's just basically a giant commercial show. And yes, kind of some announcements go through, and I do look at it for like, let's say releases and stuff like that. It's like, oh, hey, this game's going to come out this time and everything like that. Like, maybe I want to end up checking that out. That's how I found out about Record and everything like that. And Record didn't turn out to be all too fantastic. But at the same time, it's a game I enjoyed, and so I'm glad that I ended up seeing it at E3 because it made me kind of wonder and, you know, gave a little bit of excitement. And I like having that excitement every once in a while. A lot of people are against you know, the whole pre-order culture and everything like that. And while I strongly agree with that, you know, you know, pre-order culture is not a good thing. And E3 is basically trying to sort of being the epitome of trying to get everyone to pre-order it before games are even pre-orderable. And so, you know, obviously that's not a good thing, but at the same time, it adds excitement. And I like excitement in the industry, you know, being able to see these big trailers and everything like that and seeing them all huff and puff everything. And, you know, it just, it's a general excitement, but you have to learn kind of how to take it in a way that's, you know, not going to make you go out and make stupid decisions because, you know, there's a lot of games shown at E3 that end up not being that great. And there's been a lot of controversy about games that get announced at E3 because of that. You know, for example, Watch Dogs is a great example of a game that was shown off and ended up being nothing like what they showed. And so people were quite disappointed. So I feel like E3 is just going to kind of take that sort of mindset and be like, you know what, we are a marketing show, and that's kind of where they're headed. Now, obviously, the price is fairly cheap because they still want, or fa not cheap, fairly steep, because they want it to still be mostly kind of a professional show. You know, you can't have those kind of public conferences and things like that and have it still kind of have that atmosphere. There's a lot of kind of conferences that they'll try to do and open it up to the public, but most of it's going to be niche stuff, such as the Microsoft Dev kind of presentations and things like that. Like, nobody wants to sit there and listen to how to program for Windows 10. You know, nobody wants to sit there and listen to that unless you're actually in the industry and doing that type of stuff. That said, gaming is everywhere. So one giant concern is that, you know, people are going to be bringing their kids in because they wanted to go because the new Call of Duty might be there or something like that. And that is a huge concern. I think the price will kind of help get rid of that because who the hell is going to pay $250 to make their kid go see the next Call of Duty when they can't even play it, you know, obviously a little bit of logic there kind of makes it seem like maybe they probably wouldn't, but at the same time, it does kind of put a weird preface on it to where maybe it is just going towards being a commercial show. Maybe it's just going to be one of those things where it's like, you know, we're just here to advertise nowadays instead of actually showing off gaming news. Now, they could still end up doing a lot of announcements and things like that, but E3's relevance has kind of shimmered away, and obviously I just talked about that. And I feel like it would actually be not too surprising if it did end up taking that turn to where it was mostly just a commercial show. That said, I'm curious if the tickets are actually going to sell well or not. I don't know how many people actually care about E3 these days. Like, like I was just saying, you know, the relevance to it has kind of like shimmered away. And I don't know how many, you know, gamers these days, unless they're really, really into the industry, actually care about E3 or know what E3 is. I've actually talked to young gamers these days, you know, let's say I'm talking teenagers, not, you know, little kids, and they don't even know what E3 is. They're like, what's E3? Like, they'll know what PAX is because, you know, that's where all the YouTubers and everything like that go. But aside from that, they'll be like, I don't know what E3 is because it's mostly been for the press. It's been stuff to be like, hey, here's information for the press that they can hype everyone else on. It's basically giving them a preview into, you know, where the industry is moving and things like that instead of being so much a consumer show until of late. I remember when I was a kid, I always loved hearing about E3 news because I'd be able to hear about all these awesome new games and not only that, new consoles, new hardware, new directions for companies, new software that was coming out for everything. And it was always really, really exciting because you just never knew it was going to show up. And this year you kind of expect it's going to be like, yeah, they're going to show four to five new games and there's going to be like one or two indies so they can fill their quota. And that's basically what's going to be there. And it's all going to be marketing spiel and you're not going to get any new information. The new information is going to come two days down the line when they end up doing their own conference on their own time, which is unfortunate. You know, E3 used to be a really, really cool event and now it's kind of meh, but I don't know. Maybe some people are more excited about it than I am. You know, obviously I'm pretty cynical about it because I don't like the whole marketing thing. You know, I went to school for graphic design, so I get it. You know, and they got some great designs in there and everything like that. And it's totally all marketing stuff and it's great. But at the same time, you know, it's kind of like deceiving people in a sense. And I, I do like the idea of getting excited, 
but I don't think that going to E3 because you're excited is going to be a good idea, and I don't necessarily think it's a show for consumers, unless they make it so. You know, maybe they'll actually change up their own entire thing, and you know, I think the biggest part for consumers will be able to being able to go to those booths, those um, kind of displays and everything like that, and being able to try the games and try out demos and everything like that. But at the same time, a lot of those demos are going to be, you know, press releases and things like that. They're going to be very much unpolished experiences. And so a lot of people might look at that and be like, oh, well, this isn't what I was expecting. So I really do hope that they kind of lock it down a little bit. And maybe the price will make it so that this ends up happening to where they don't just have the general public it's open to the public so that anybody can get in there but it's not just everyone you know anyone and everyone that wanted to get in gets in you know this sort of thing which yes you can if you have the money for it of course you know maybe they're also doing this to kind of line some pockets as well maybe the show's not performing as well maybe financially as it used to maybe they're not getting as many sponsors and it also brings up the question are they doing this as a way to kind of capture the youtube market without giving youtube the sort of Oh, you're media because you're on YouTube thing because that gets very, very sketchy very, very quickly. Like there's a lot of people on YouTube that make content and they don't want to necessarily go through and because I think, you know, other events have had this problem as well to where they don't necessarily know how to handle it when a YouTuber comes up and is like, oh, you know, you've got this really notable fan base and everything like that. However, you know, you're you're on YouTube, you're not like a traditional media and we don't know what you're going to do with this and everything like that. And you can end up giving us no coverage for all they know because they're not reliant on it for the most part. And so, you know, once again, it could be a way to kind of let them in. And it could also be a way to kind of lock other sort of news outlets out. Like, let's say there's a news outlet that they don't necessarily want there. They can end up locking them out that way. But that is definitely tinfoil hat stuff. I do think that the getting YouTubers into E3 is definitely one of the motivations for this sort of change. But at the same time, I don't think that it's kind of the main thing. I think it is the fact that it is going towards more of being a marketing show rather than the whole professional scene sort of conference style stuff, which is what we've already seen in the past few years. And it's also why I don't really care about E3 anymore. You know, I normally, when it comes to E3, I'll wait until afterwards and I'll check the release lists and then I'll be like, you know what? That sounds cool. I'll check out a kind of nice summary of whatever the conferences did. Normally I end up watching Microsoft because Normally they talk about Windows and PC type of gaming and stuff like that, which I'm always interested in, but for the most part, it's Xbox stuff that I couldn't care less about. But yeah, so anyways, that's my thoughts on it. You know, that's why I think it's kind of going that direction, or I think that's the direction it's going to go. We'll get more information, you know, when it actually happens. And if you do think that you're excited to go and see E3, then, you know, you can end up picking up tickets. I recommend picking them up early rather than later because... Yeah, they are limited, and I don't think the price is actually going to drop on them, aside from the early kind of bird special that they have going, which I think, I still think is $150. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested. If not, then I don't blame you, because quite frankly, nobody really cares about E3 anymore. I'm sure somebody cares. I just don't. My group of friends definitely don't. We're all like, yeah, E3, cool. Like, back when I was maybe 10, I was really, really excited, and... Maybe nine? I don't know. I remember when they announced the Wii. When they were, or not, well, yeah, it was called the Revolution back in the time, but that was really, really exciting the way they kind of showed that off. And they're like, here's motion controls. Everyone's like, wow! That sort of thing. But that doesn't happen anymore, which is unfortunate. They save that for everything else. So, anyways, this has been me, Micah, with another topic video talking about how E3 is going public. And E3 Live is done. So if you're looking for E3 Live, yeah, it, it's not happening. You know, it's literally being replaced by the main show, which I... Is that the first time a sub show has been replaced by the main show? Anyways, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. You can also check out my impressions review. My most recent review was one for Mega Dimension Neptunia V2, which is actually a fantastic JRPG. So if you like JRPGs, definitely check out that review. It may tickle your fancy or not. I don't know. I don't know what you like, since you know what you like, so you can end up checking that video and determining whether you like it, but it is a game I highly recommend, so go ahead and check out that video and see how it goes, and also give me feedback as well. Um, I know this video probably wasn't that fantastic, my neck hurts like hell, and I'm trying to play a game while kind of looking sideways so that my neck doesn't, like, break itself. I don't know why it's doing this, I think I just slept on it wrong or something like that. Anyways, that is going to be me for this topic. You know, do you guys have any thoughts? Do you think it's going to end up becoming a consumer show? Do you think that it won't? You know, maybe it's just going to be the same exact thing we've had every year, which is probably not fantastic. But regardless, you know, 
whatever you guys think about it, make sure to leave it in the comments. And will you be trying to attend E3 or do you even care about E3? Do you even know what E3 is? Some people don't. I know. I, I mentioned that in this video. I'm like, yeah, some people don't even know what it is. It's kind of shocking considering it was such a big deal back in the day. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.